Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the decline of movie theaters. Again? Again, because that's all they seem to be doing. That's all the news about movie theaters is mostly bad, but uh, we got a little bit, a little bit of good we news. We do have some possibly maybe good news. Possibly maybe. Now, before we talk about the good news of, of theaters reaching an agreement with Universal, we have to go back in the time machine to a couple months ago where Universal was was the devil because they dared release Trolls 2. Right, right. Uh, outside of movie theaters, they went to directly to VOD. Mm -hmm. And that was horrible. And how dare they? Theaters were going to come back online in a couple of weeks and they just couldn't right. wait. And here we are, you know, eight months later. And yeah. the theaters are still basically shut down most places. And now they're running out of money because nobody is releasing movies. So you're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. Uh, so Universal had to, you know, stay afloat, and they didn't then run around theaters. Now nobody's releasing movies at theaters, really. Pretty much. You know? I mean, they are, but it's, it's like I mean, the smaller things. They're saving their big releases for next year, or I think they're going to put a lot of them on video on demand. Yeah, I mean, so they kind of Disney's going to. Disney's going to. Disney's like, we don't need you. They flat out said, we don't need theaters Well, anymore. they didn't say it that way, but they wow. basically said, by the success of Milan and our premier video access, it would make, you know, we de most definitely plan on using it in the future. Um, they, they're going to they're gonna use it. They're going to use it because if the theaters don't open soon, they're going to they're gonna use it because they have no choice. Yeah, that's pretty much it. The theaters do not have a choice anymore. It's not, uh, they used to be able to dictate the terms a, mm -hmm. a lot of times, except for Disney, they'd come in and bully them or whatever on Star Wars. But for the most part, it was, uh, the studios were sort of um, beholden to the theaters and that mm -hmm. is not the case now. Now it's like, we've got, we all have streaming services we don't need you. I mean, honestly, other than the fact that some people just prefer the theatrical experiences, they don't really need theaters. And studios, you know, what makes me mad is, is that they're going on about, you know, oh, we need money, we need help, the studios in Hollywood. And, you know, and the theaters, we need to keep, we need to bail out so the theaters can stay in business. Meanwhile, they could keep the theaters in business and they don't. Yeah. So apparently Universal is reaching a deal with uh, theaters. They already reached them before the AMC. And now um, they're going on with, with Cinemark. Yeah, so this is uh, an accord. An accord has been struck in. Universal <laughs> and Cinemark strike historic deal, shrinking theatrical windows for event picks to 31 days. So we're right. talking the big, big, like, right. so if Wonder Woman came out, then uh, in December, like has been rumored, then they could turn around and dump her on HBO Max it in depends. January. It depends on how much how, money. Right. It depends on how much money the movie makes. If it's a big blockbuster movie, it makes more money. It has to stay in theaters longer. Okay, so here we go. Any universal film that doesn't open to 50 million or higher will have Cinemark's blessing to make its PVOD debut after 17 days versus a month. Um, it's a history making deal. It's a history making deal under the terms of the multi year pact. So even when things go back to quote unquote normal, this is still going to be in effect. Right, right. And the thing is, Universal didn't have to give them this. No, they didn't. I mean, the theaters, I'm going to be honest, they took a steaming piss on universal they were mm -hmm. like we're gonna boycott you we're My not gonna... person coming to their aid yeah is universal right everybody else is like we all got streaming services we don't need yeah you. uh you know hbo with warner and then we got well, Disney. I think universal's deal with amc is that they put on streaming for so long amc gets a cut of it yeah i'm pretty I sure so. it was something like that the amc gets a cut of it up to like uh, you know so long and then they can't charge the smaller uh, rental fees until like three months later or something like that i don't have it in front of me yeah, yeah. this is another multi multi-year deal that mm -hmm. they have with amc so they're going to be willing and dealing and honestly the ball is not in the theater's court mm -hmm. anymore they're they're anything any scrap they get at this point they're pretty much going to have to take right because i mean if Theaters or studios can go ahead and put it on PO, PVOD or whatever, mm -hmm. especially if they own the service and they don't have to give the theater a cut at all. You know, yeah. what, what do you think they're going to do? So the um, let's see here. Cinemark, the third largest chain, is OK with uh, all other Universal DreamWorks animation and focus features being made available 17 days after release on POV, similar to the arrangement right, with, with AMC. AMC. The Cinemark news is significant for several reasons. Not only does it introduce the idea of a 31-day window for tent poles, it means that two of the country's three largest movie theater circuits are on board with Universal's push to release movies in the home early and create a new VOD revenue stream. Mm -hmm. uh, Universal has more leverage. It's also a win for Cinemark and other exhibitors 
31-day PVOD window for Blockbuster Fair provides more protection than the 17-day. Well, that's, yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. Because the movies people are going to get, look, they're not going to go see the indie art house film. You know, it's not going to bring any significant business. It's going to be a big superhero tentpole movie. Right, that's basically what you this know, is for, is to make I, sure know. it goes to theaters first. Um, yeah, so terms weren't disclosed, but Cinemark and AMC are expected to share in the PVO. Yeah, that's what it sounded revenue. like. So it sounds like they're playing ball. Universal's playing ball with it, which honestly I think is smart but they also have their own streaming service now too they have peacock but they're not set up i don't think to do the uh direct sales kind of like disney is and at least they're playing ball and that's gonna make them look better to the theater owners because disney they more or less said in their last earnings call like the theaters aren't really a concern anymore no just, they and get it's the not just disney other studios too and here's the thing it's like um, they don't really need the theaters. No. And that's the thing. And it's like, I mean, it's really cool that Universal is trying to work something out. And, like, they're actually putting their money where their mouth is. They're trying to actually do something to help yeah. the situation, unlike other studios. But they don't have to. No, especially after the backlash. Because yep. they're, they're the first ones to do it. They're the first ones who went, you know, di bypass the theaters. And honestly, if I would have had the Theater Association come to me... And tell me what's what when they really had no leg to stand on, no way to bar. Mm -hmm. I would have told them to go take a hike. I would have been like, fine, we're launching Peacock this fall and suck it. You know, yeah. suck a peach. <laughs> but they're they're playing ball. So uh theaters, you know, they're they're gonna have a place, but it's gonna be like arcades where you know people go to the arcade for the experience. They still exist, but they're very diminished compared to what mm -hmm. they used to be because everything you can do in an arcade, you can actually do better at home. Right. So. And then also, it's, it's important to note, too, that just because the, the Universal has that option to put it onto, uh, you know, VOD and sell it that way uh, after so many days, they don't have to. No. Like, if it's doing really well in the theaters and they think they're going to long term make more money having it in theatrical release over, you know, putting it on, on VOD, they, they can, they'll leave it in there longer. It's just that's the minimum that uh, they have, that they, they, that they have to. I still don't that. They have to give it to theaters when they don't really have to give. That's a problem when you have a business that relies on somebody else. Yeah. And you're just a distribution method. We saw, what, look what happened with Diamond. I mean. Oh, with you, comic books. Yeah. Right. You yeah. don't need, you don't need them. It's just because nope. that's the way it's been done doesn't mean that's the, that's necessary. Um, and then you run into problems where they're like, you know, ma demanding the moon, and it's like, well, you really don't have like the stand on. So um, they gave them, they're giving them some more security, and they're reserving the right to be able to put it on VOD sooner. But that does not mean that they're going to. That is true. So very interesting to watch this. This is going to definitely change Hollywood. I mean, Hollywood's never going to be the same. Mm -hmm. It is never going to be the same. Where I don't think we're going to see these billion dollar blockbusters like we used to and you're gonna see them but you're not gonna see them like that is just a box office money it's gonna yeah. be a, divided over different things to create the amount and we know with some of them you don't get to see the numbers like no some of the services especially disney no, yeah. so they don't tell you the numbers and they even said in their call we're not going to talk anymore about certain numbers and stuff until later like they weren't going to talk fox numbers at all and we're not going to give you an update on disney plus until the next the next investor call or whatever i think it's going to be that investor meeting yeah but still like, we're not going to put anything out about our numbers until then yeah so that, that's Take it. our word for it yeah netflix can hide it and hbo can hide it now and uh you know it's not out there so i, I mean eventually there'll probably be some kind of a something that um, consolidates all the numbers, you know, the box office plus the revenue. From they're going to have to. They're going to have to. Um, theaters are going to need it just, I mean, or not theaters, theaters are going to need it just to, to be able to report to people what they did. But anyway, I mean, if you're worried about theaters going away, um, well, one, you should be, but Universal is at least out there trying to do something, trying to keep these people's jobs, trying to keep them going, trying to make sure that the way that this has been done for years doesn't die out completely. Mm. Other places haven't stepped forward and done that, but they're all yelling about how they want to bail out. So, yep. So, all right, we got to wrap this one up. Yep. Okay. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants as we uh, cover the decline of Hollywood. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know what else to call it. I was to call it. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.